What makes PRESS is tuberculosis, malaria, HIV. Um, the communicable diseases that tend to kill people pretty quickly and for which there are in inadequate resources. The other things that make PRESS are things like the Ebola outbreak or sort of dramatic events of that type. Um, cancer is considered a rare and not important disease, which is not true. There are approximately 600,000 people in Africa who develop cancer every year. There are, out of the 52 countries, less than 30 have any form of cancer treatment available uh, to, their, to their patients. Most patients with cancer present late at an untreatable and incurable stage. So it has a tremendous stigma. That is correct. About 30% to 36% of cancers in Africa are infectious disease related. So one of them being, of course, HIV, which is known to, uh, to uh, be a, a, a harbinger of diseases like cancer of the cervix, like Hodgkin's lymphoma and Carposi's sarcoma. Hepatitis B is associated with liver cancer. Hepatitis C is also associated with liver cancer. And then there's Heliobacter pylori, which is associated with stomach cancer, amongst others. So certainly Heliobacter pylori can be prevented by um, mass screening, probably. Uh, hepatitis B, in fact, it took 20 years after the discovery of the hepatitis B vaccine to come to Africa because it was too expensive. And it was only when it became an infant vaccine at 25 cents a shot that they introduced hepatitis B vaccine into Africa. And it's already shown quite a big difference as it has in some Asian and Southeast Asian countries where it's been introduced. We can do schistosomiasis, which causes bladder cancer that can be treated by proper waters, water and sanitation. Um, so most of HPV, well, HPV-related cancers, particularly cervical cancer, can now most likely be prevented by the HPV vaccine, um, which is being introduced. No, the pap smear requires a health infrastructure that no one has been able to either initiate or sustain in any developing country. Um, it's a good test and it made a huge difference to cervical cancer incidents in the 50s, 60s and 70s um, in northern countries that were able to implement the, um, uh, the correct way of doing pap smears. But for Africa it's just too complex and there are too many sick people from other causes. We've been working for the last 15-20 years looking at a way of screening a woman with a test that's affordable, um, acceptable um, and accurate that could give you a result such that you could treat her at the same visit. And we have, we've done the work, people said you're crazy. What we've been doing is doing testing for the human papillomavirus DNA, of which there are 15 high-risk types. And we showed in a randomized controlled trial that you could screen a woman with HPV, human papillomavirus testing, compare it to visual inspection where you just wash the cervix with a bit of vinegar and look for a white lesion, compared to an untreated group. And we showed that HPV DNA testing was very, very successful. There's new technology that's been developed, and it's called um, HPV Expert, where you can take a sample from the cervix, it goes into a special machine with a cartridge, which you can do individually, you don't have to batch it, and it gives you a result in one hour. Preventing cervical cancer and other cancers is a lot more than the device. It's a lot more than putting a needle in a child's arm. It needs a health system. And one of the things the Ebola outbreak should, teach, should have taught us is that if your health systems are weak, um, you, it's very difficult to sustain preventative or even curative services. So we need our ministries of health in Africa to recognize 
that they should probably be spending 15% of GDP on health um, throughout their countries. And there was, in fact, a declaration made in Abuja to do exactly that. I think only two countries have reached that. If you have a healthy community and a healthy society, you have greater labor productivity, you have greater um, educational attainment, and with those, you, go, you, you slot in, you slide in to the growth dynamic. And there's something called the demographic dividend, where you actually reduce your community's need for government support. So you work towards universal health coverage, in a creative way that works for your particular country. But ultimately, you're looking at economic growth driven by a healthy nation. One, advocacy and bringing to people's attention that this is a problem. Two, getting treatment facilities available where most people can access them. And three, providing decent palliative care.